I can't see. Not scary when you can't. Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay. I'm trying. Got it, I think. Is that it, or is these two? No. That's it, right? Now there's going to be monsters, I think. That sounded ominous. For my very first observation, some of the things happened exactly as I read in the case file, especially the mysterious opening and locking of doors. I'm much more worried about what I saw in the basement, a little boy turning into a monster. I'm not sure if it was the same monster that killed the cat outside the basement door. Also, did I really see a dream? I'm not sure. I did find my very first strong clue. Baron's note. What happened in Carla's room? Oh, it's Carla. I'm sure I must have missed blood on Carla's door when I first walked by. Many of the questions remain unanswered. But I am but I have to keep my mind sane and not let my imagination go all over the place. Just remember what Mr. Proth Prother said. Only the strong clues matter.
Das mehr Heidi hoch. I've already learned quite a bit of what happened here. I thought you'd leave after experiencing my little episodes of paranormal craziness. But you are a tough lad. Don't think you will find me easily. I'm protected by my new loving family. They know you're here and they are going to get rid of you like everyone else. For now, welcome to my home. Suicide has affected everyone at the Smith's residence. Several questions remain unanswered, namely the one about the source of the gun. The police took away the gun and some of the other of Carla's possessions as evidence. Each one of us was interviewed thoroughly. The kids were overlooked. They were just asked a couple of things about their interaction with Carla and told they could they would be safe and that everything was under control. Once the police left, a, lo a lawyer of a layer of fear and sadness settled over the house as the shock of what happened finally set in. None of us could sleep. I could hear Mr. Smith pacing in his office. His racking coughs echoed in the empty hallways. He had fallen sick a few days before Carla's untimely demise, and his cough had only gotten worse. Chili, this place locked. No battery. How can it be around when there's no no electricity in this house? We could all go for a nap right now. Why do I 
have these black circles around my eyes. What's happening to me? Well, you're tired. You admit you need a nap. When this was last? When was this last? The soggy layer, like note laying between the lanes. Blah 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 blah. Note laundry. Okay. He has changed. He doesn't talk to me anymore, and he has lost interest in the kids. He doesn't share his thoughts with me either. Every morning, I sit by his side and try to talk to him when he is in when he is in pain. His cough is always worse in the morning. I ask him, "Where does it hurt? What's bothering you? What's on your mind?" But he stays silent. How can I help him if he won't tell me what's wrong? I tried my best to distract him from his depression. This pessimism does not become me. I spend the mornings drawing in my art room or watering the tulips and the carnations in my greenhouse. I pass the evenings playing the piano, but it's for the knot. It is for naught. Hours pass by, but I fail to get him out of my thoughts. How can I forget someone I you? How can you forget someone you love? However, I also love my kids, and these few weeks have been quite hard on Terry, and Ellen has only grown more distant. The situation is unhealthy for this family. I feel like the only way to fix this is to get away from this all. Get away from all this. Sometimes I feel like this house is cursed. Dan has always had a custom of giving me the gift of my choice on my birthday. Anything I want, it can be mine. Lucky for us, my birthday is right around the corner. Next week, to be precise. When we stand in the lighthouse, the very place where he asked me out first, and the place where I accepted his proposal, he will ask me what I wish for as my gift. I will tell him that I wish for us to leave and for, for the countryside. My aunt has a ranch there, and it will only be a few days, only until things settle down so he doesn't have to worry about his work. He always indulges me on my birthday, and I'm sure he will agree. However, he has changed. If he doesn't accept my request, I will have no choice but to get my kids and go without him. It breaks my heart. It does, but my children are my responsibility. See nothing? Because <sighs> we're gonna have to try and go in the hole with the monster.
be able to see, but we'll do it anyway. It's hard when there's no fucking batteries! Okay, yeah, sure, run out of energy right by the door. That's cool, bud. Age nine, Ellen was a very quiet child. She preferred drawing over playing with kids of her own age in the nearby park or the neighborhood. When Carla joined the family, she was asked to take the kids to the park to play and so that Ellen can open up to the other kids. Terry seemed to do well, but Ellen would sit around, not play with the kids, but rather observe the kids playing. Later, when Ellen would come home, she'd draw out whatever she saw that happened that day. The Smiths decided to have her decided to have her rather stay at a home. What? The Smiths decided they'd rather have her stay at home after they noticed some drawings of the little boy in black wearing a rabbit mask. Since then, she started to draw dark silhouettes, which usually scared the family in general. Miss, Mr. Smith, being a psychiatrist, wasn't really bothered, but kept a close eye on her behavior because he believed the drawings are usually the result of kids' imaginations and also because he didn't believe in things like ghosts and demons. Ellen didn't like to speak a lot, but she loved humming a lullaby in the house. Age 12, Terry was a sporty kid. He was very good in studies and a famous boy at school as well. He always wanted to become like his father and enjoyed talking to different people about their interests and it would bring the conversation to an interest of his own, basketball, which he loved to play. He wasn't allowed to watch a lot of television, so his interests were developed in a healthy environment. Terry also liked to write stories and usually would do sports commentaries running around the house. On his 10th birthday, his parents gifted him a Walkman and he was finally able to record his commentaries on an empty cassette to listen to them over and over again and share with his friends. Okay.
I missed what happened, but yeah, package. Okay. Oh, he's smoking again, sir. That's not good for your health. <laughs> At least he stomps it out. There's nothing on it. Should I put something on it? Can I put like? Page 31, Emily was known for her glowing smile and her kindness in the neighborhood of the White Hill. She was a very open-minded and successful painter. Her paintings had been showcased at different local and international galleries. Occasionally, did she play piano? It's hard to speak this much with my retainer in. Didn't she occasionally play piano? Didn't call herself the best at it when she compared it to her painting skills. Also belonged to a pretty strong family. Her father ran a local vegetable business and was found and fond of cards. I don't have a flashlight because I can't find my decade five batteries. Emma believed in life more than ever after she got married to Mr. Smith. She admired Mr. Smith's work and dedication towards patients and always looked forward to taking motivation and inspiration just not from her friends and family, but his life but her but his life partner, Mr. Smith. What? She had told her friends that she was lucky to have a life full of memories and love. The decision of getting married to Mr. Smith was the time she'd like to live and feel over and over again. She dedicated she she dedicated and played a special piano tune to Mr. Smith the day they got married. God, the English. These are not to my friends. The rocking chair. The moves. That wasn't good. Throwy McGee. Ah! Iris, no. I'm, I'm busy, boo boo.
breath is warm. Stop breathing on me. <laughs> Psychology for the Experienced, not my kind of book. It was given to Daniel Smith. Paper. Patient file Juan Carlos Rodriguez. The very first file I received just mentioned his first name, Carlos. Since I was seeing many other patients at the time, I declined this case. I couldn't accept another patient without compromising the time I gave to all my patients, as it takes as it taking a case requires a lot of preparation and a good amount of time getting to know the patients, a couple of days passed and I received another patient's request with the name Juan Carlos. As usual, I wrote back and told the patient that I was swamped with patients and that if he wishes, I can come. I can put his name on the wait list. He'll be notified as the time slots open up. Then on a fine Monday morning, I was having a cup of joe in my room and preparing some notes on my patient who'd be coming up to see me that day when Baron knocked on the office door. He came in and handed me the file. The third time, the patient name got Carlo Juan Russo. Juan Rodriguez, his full name. I couldn't say no to Carlos anymore. He was desperately trying to reach me. Nervous, he was in a lot of pain and really needed help with something. His approach to me was surely unusual, but being a psychiatrist, I have met many different patients with a diverse set of situations and problems. I decided to make some time and start my sessions with Carlos as soon as possible. Baron took my acceptance letter and sent it to the same address from where the patient's request file came from. We got started the very next day. Pill jar, not sure if, I would, if it was for the patient. For the patient, or it belonged to Mr. Smith himself. Always handy. Dad, Terry. I miss Terry. Ooh. Dark. Doctor of Psychology. Someone was very proud of their achievements. Actually, legally, oftentimes we have to hang it where we work. Got more music. I just can't look at it yet. The lever, I can fit it somewhere. Yes. A half filled alcohol bottle. Can I. Can I like this? Maybe? Your favorite soup isn't ready yet. Mm -hmm. 